Welcome back, ATO friends. No, this is not an episode. No, this is not a podcast for well. Not yet. We're not done. We get a lot of fan feedback from all over. Friends, strangers, we welcome it all. And in turn, we want to say thank you. So from now on, loyal listeners, we will be releasing these little clips called A Message from the Host. I'm Joe King. I'm here with the great Randy Aguilar. We won't always, I, you may not even hear me on the next one. Maybe Misty, maybe Danny, maybe Josh. But we will be putting out these little clips for the listener for feedback and also to tease some episodes. We want to give an update on some coming soon episodes, projects in the works, and also get some fan feedback from you, the loyal listener. It's coming soon. We have Detective Kevin Jancy. He's a longtime detective, great human being. He tells this story of true friendship, partnership, and tragedy. He tells a pretty amazing story the day that Officer Kevin James saved his life. KJ was his guardian angel. Randy, you've you've worked with around Kevin a lot more than I have when his involvement with the ATO and the DPA he's been pretty he's been pretty dug in for quite a while yeah uh, Kevin you're gonna hear a lot of great stuff about him he's a past uh, cops cop winner he's uh, currently a uh, director from Northwest and he's also the uh, treasurer for the uh, uh, the pack for the Dallas Police so- Officers Association's pack and he's also the chairman of the uh, Kevin James Foundation, and he's been a big integral part in raising money for the ATO and helping the uh, Kevin James endowment grow over the past several years. He's he's a great man, great he officer. Is, he is. He's a he's a good dude, and he genuinely cares about uh, the first responder community and everybody. He uh, he also heads up the Kevin James Clay Shoot. That's our annual event for the ATO. Um, yeah, the K, the KJ story was it, it's heartbreaking. Um, overall, it's he's saved Kevin's life and I believe that same year that's when uh, uh, several months later KJ uh, lost his own life alright the first week of July we're going to release a two parter it's going to be something to the effect of the history and evolution of Dallas SWAT still haven't decided yet on the name maybe some of the listeners will reach out and give me an idea because I need them I'm we, have gonna, a lot of, I'm, we have a lot of SWAT listeners so hopefully they'll oh, yeah. get it enjoy this one shout out north carolina swat i know you're you're waiting for this episode if you got a good cool name for the title give me it you know you've been reaching out anyway so just keep it coming um it's i think the name is speaks for itself it's going to basically highlight and detail the birth and growth of one of the most recognized swat units in the country dallas swat we got two old school legends on. Uh, we got the commander, Scott McDonald, and we also have Steve Claggett, along with two active badass SWAT operators uh, in Danny Canetti and Matt Smith. I'm looking forward to that one. That's actually, I'm going to release the first one, first week of July, and it might be July 7th when that second, that part two releases. Uh, we'll see if we can get them done by then. I think the listeners are really going to like it. It's a different perspective from change in technology that's been used the uh the overall culture the basically how the foundation was laid, was laid for dallas SWAT back in the uh the 80s and uh, 90s we uh talk about the little little known incident about the dallas cowboy parade that went to shit and why it went to shit and what they did the next year to well to, several yeah. upcoming perspectives on that from yeah yeah from the SWAT guys and the, the commander at the time that was over that too eventually so yeah yeah we have uh chief uh doug kowalski's episode uh, recorded uh, that one's a lengthy one it's, uh, it spans a long career and and a little behind the curtain for the listener there was a slight <laughs> technical issue that that Kennedy's going to have to to uh, sort out but it will that Doug Kowalski now Prosper PD chief his episode is upcoming and he also touches on a lot of the um, a lot of the incidents and in SWATs because he was the commander long time commander over Dallas SWAT very respected. We got five other recordings done, including Chief uh, Kowalski. We got we got the Dallas DA uh, Mich- Michelle Sugar that pr- 
prosecuted successfully, that Dr. Death, that neurosurgeon that was fucking everybody up. Um, it's a really good episode, a uh, really good true crime episode. It's kind of out of our, you know, it's out of our norm. It, it is out of our norm. It's, it's kind of like the, the Mike Reiner episode it touches on a piece of Dallas history, local history. And I think these true crime nuts are going to, are going to enjoy it. I loved it. And she's an impressive prosecutor and one of the most respected Dallas still has this day. Uh, she works in the child abuse unit now. And if, you, and if you guys have any current event topics about police perspective, just anything going on, email Joe and let him know, hey, this might be something you want to hear about. Let us know, and we'll be able to find that, track it down, and give you all as much information. You know, part of our mission here is to educate the public and the non-police people into what we do and how we do things. That way you have a better understanding or, you know, clear up any kind of inconsistencies that are out there that way you get as be- the best information as possible. Well, in some way, I mean, we're, in a lot of these things, we educate some police, whether it's our, within our own department here in Dallas PD or some other uh, agencies, smaller agencies. They don't have a lot of the training that we have, and, uh, you know, they, they could get some out, get something out of this, and that's good. The more information, the better. I want to talk about the Sissy Officer Foundation. Um, that is, if you if you actually don't, Fast forward through the intro, since 1999, we've been providing financial assistance to the first responder community. If an officer gets sick, we help. If a fireman gets injured, the ATO is there. If the daily constant beat down of this life we choose gets too heavy and ATO counselors, our confidential counseling therapists need to step in, they're there. The ATO has a very unique confidential counseling program it's looked at by other agencies and other nonprofits as a, as a model i believe right randy oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we've, been, we've it, been doing it for a while we've been real lucky and it's tr- tried to be emulated and i think it's it's going to be tough because we've we've had some people that have been around a long time y'all yeah. heard from dotty claggett and we've Popkin. been we've been very very fortunate that uh We've had some of the same counselors over, and I think our counseling program is growing. That's probably our biggest financial need because it's getting used a lot. Officers used to just drink their problems away or not deal with them at all. Um, We're doing a lot better of making sure that people talk about things and get stuff off their chest. Well, it's becoming more normalized uh, in breaking the stigma of of, of tough guy or tough gal first responder actually realizing becoming self-aware realizing damn i'm kind of fucked up i, I need help yeah we can't and, just drink a yeah. beer and rub dirt on it anymore. no it, 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 you can't it's not sustainable and the the ato we don't care where you get your help from as long as you get help and you don't self-destruct uh, but there our ato confidential counseling program is in this area at least is a standard and like Randy said, other organizations have tried to emulate it, and I don't think that they're, they don't have quite the traction ATO does with that. Yeah, we make sure these guys are vetted. They're either former cops, they're married to cops, they have, they know what it's like to be in an officer's shoes or a spouse, a spouse of an officer's shoes. They're Cultural, culturally competent. And what does that mean? They know us, they know our minds. Some of our counselors have already been, uh, they've been, uh, cops and detectives themselves they understand the very unique and complex up and down mind of a first responder and that's needed because we are unique we are a nonprofit. if you would like to donate to our cause and helping your first responders please go to atodallas.org every little bit helps if all of our what percentage randy it's high 90s yeah there's there's no paid staff here there you know it probably our biz, biggest expense is credit card fees when stuff's get made um donations are made online and probably the next biggest stuff is just marketing stuff but the marketing stuff is to get raise awareness for our campaigns and raise money to pay for yeah. our other stuff so it, it's that's an expected expense but there's no paid staff there's no ceo or, a, or chairman making a lot of money. All, everyone's volunteered. 
So it's it's a great yeah. There's not many fat cats sitting over here with dressed like Boss Hog raking in money. And we <laughs> even this podcast, this podcast was designed to give officers and uh, and and firemen and, and military and organizations a stage to tell their story and uh, of their recovery, their injury, uh, whether it's injury or or mental breakdown, or they just got a cool badass story that they could tell and uh, explain how they coped with it. If you want to make a donation, you go to atodallas.org, and when you're we you make that donation, you can put in the notes and you can specify and say, "Hey, I heard about this donation site via the uh, Bridging the Divide podcast. We need to know that. We want to know how big an impact we're we're making for the organization. And if you want to mail stuff here, the address is fourteen twelve Griffin Street East, Dallas, Texas seven five two one five. You you can find that on that website, and you know if you write a check in or you just put in notes, bridging the divide. That lets us know that this this podcast is effective. Yeah, um, yeah. Please do. Uh, please go to atodallas dot org and uh, look up our information. Look at our background, and if you want to donate, it'd be greatly appreciated. And the funds will go to a great cause in helping your first responders. We want the, the ATO and the city of Dallas. We want to provide the best first responder we can, and Having an officer with good physical health and, more importantly, good mental health to put a better, better product out for the citizen, that, that's paramount right now. And, it, and it's all about better customer service because we don't always get the best customer service from big cities like the city of Dallas. Yeah. But we want to make sure that we provide our officers and members in the first responder community with the best service possible. And uh, these donations help make that possible. Lastly, I want to hear from more from you fans. From Texas to California to Germany to Italy, I've gotten messages, a very nice, sweet, heartfelt me- felt message from friends, from complete strangers in other states and countries, uh, from other departments. Uh, you know, I'm, we're, we listen. I, I read every one of them and I respond to every one and I share them within the group. Uh, between Randy and Misty and uh, Josh and Danny and I, I and some of the other uh, guest co-hosts as well as the uh, people that have been on and you know in our inner circle uh, I share some of these on the social media I always crop out the names of the people that that do it because I want the listener to see uh, what their peers are saying whether they're civilian or uh, or sworn means a lot to us it actually gives us fuel uh it's mo- it motivates me to want to do more of these and continue this um but i want you to know that those responses do not go unnoticed uh if you want to hear a specific topic or you want to suggest a guest we'll listen we are currently cooking up an all first responder spouse episode we want to hear from hear their perspectives from the spouses that are in the first responder world it ain't easy on them Especially some of these first responders that have had had uh, life changing injuries or illness or or just mental decay and or over the years of uh, of the jobs beatdown, there are they some of some of these uh, spouses they they're the uh, the glue that holds that family together. We want to hear from them. I think it'd be a great perspective. Misty's cooking it up, so you know it's going to be great. We also want to have on the great Alan Holmes again with some victim rights advocates to have a roundtable discussion on the recovery process. What to expect uh, from the department, from the, vic- uh, from the victim center, from the, uh, the actual hospitals. We want to have on a sane nurse, a part of this, the sexual assault exam- examining nurse to talk about that process. It's not easy, but it's some of the victims we just want to educate them with some information on what to expect on that recovery process before and after uh this happens because uh it's not it's not easy and a lot of people are just unaware of some of the true true advocates that are out there for for the victims they're there for the victims the department's there for the victims and a lot of times crimes go unreported because yeah. you know victims are Someone start blaming themselves. Yeah, blame and they themselves, say, and they don't know how to deal with it. And hopefully, this will help 
put them more at ease, let them know that they're not alone and this type of this this information gathering is very important to helping them bring them some peace and some closure to the incident. And I can't imagine that ever happening or ever even getting closure yeah. to it, but it, it, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, there are people out there who want to help. I just want to get them all in a room, throw some topics out there, and I and I and I and I think uh, I think that would be an amazing episode and really are going to, it's going to touch a lot of people for just for the awareness aspect alone. We want to have a panel on and discuss uh, training and responses to active shooter situations, specifically rapid hostage, hostage rescue response, single single man uh, entry, uh, with the uh, in light of um, incidents going on here in Texas and the and the country and the world. Uh, I think that's a that's a topic that a lot of people will probably need education on and and maybe understand a little better. And it's it it's not pretty. It's uh it's. It's it's not easy. It's not pretty. No one ever said police work was pretty. So this is yeah. what it is. Email us at ato bridging at gmail dot com. Ato bridging at gmail dot com. If you have suggestions, you want to give feedback, good and bad. If you tell us, hey, y'all suck. All right, well, we need to know that. Yeah, well, I need to know that. We want to, we want it to be better. People in the beginning were bitching about the mics. And, yeah, we need motivation. Yeah, we need motivation, and we need we want to give a better product to the to the listener. When everybody was bitching about the early on mics, uh, you listen to the early episodes and listen to the ones now. It's like night and day, you know. If we could have taken a picture the first time you and I sat down to yeah. record how we did this and what we're doing now, it's, it's so it was like two stoners sitting in a basement <laughs> smoking weed and, and and putting a trying to put a podcast podcast together because we're not we're not that good. We're not that savvy. <laughs> Or if you just want to say hello, we'll listen and respond. I love listen, I love hearing from you. It's motivation for me. It, uh, it makes it makes uh, the team feel like what we're doing is helping somebody. And I've always said that if it helps one person, it's worth it. And I know that there's it's helped more than one person, so it makes all of this worth it. So. Until next time, stay tuned, be safe, and let's take care of each other. We're all we got.